639 subscribers. I often envision that amount of people in a room. Might need a football pitch actually. YouTube opens up so many other opportunities. Oh, success drink. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Agnes. If you're new here, so am I. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now being two and a half, almost three months, 12 videos and currently 639 subscribers into my YouTube journey, it's probably about time that I change my introduction because I'm no longer that new here. Matter of fact, this is actually my second time being new here on YouTube. Back in 2012, if you just happened to be into watching 14 year old teenagers content with about 100 odd views, talking about their collection of beads, yes you heard that right, jewellery making bead collections, <laughs> um, then you would have really liked my channel at the time. Hey guys, this is Kitty Girls channel and today I'm going to show you my beads. Okay, so in this box I have seed beads. Fast forward one or two years, my clay creation and jewellery making videos were gaining as high as 51, 71 and 325,000 views. Mesmerising. And my channel at the time reached 9,000 subscribers, which revisiting this channel now has reduced down to 7.7 thousand due to obviously the channel having been neglected. So what was I doing? Passion. I had no tactics, but what I did have was my passion for what I was doing. My love for art, creativity, video making and editing. And when you're passionate about something, naturally you're going to do more of that thing because it comes naturally. And even when no one was watching, I was posting because it made me happy. I was showing up for me. While I look back at this channel and I cringe with every inch of my being, I'm also feeling a strong sense of pride for my younger self. I admire her drive, her confidence, the passion and the motivation to keep going. I worked with what I had and may I just say, cue the nostalgic music, was a pink swanky digital camera that my mum bought me for my birthday after I scanned the pages of the mighty Argos catalogue. We're all there, aren't we? We're all going, those, those were the times. But yeah, I can't help but wonder where that channel would have gone to had I continued. Where I would be with it. Where I would be with it. But yeah, I can't help but wonder where I would be now had I continued with that channel. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. This YouTube journey came to a halt when a new chapter of my life began, which consumed me mentally and physically, which brings us to my battle with scoliosis. At the age of 15, I was diagnosed with a condition called scoliosis. Scoliosis is a condition where your spine twists and curves like a corkscrew as I referred to it in my previous video. I'll change it up this time though. My spine was pretty much like one of those bendy pencils that everybody used to have in their pencil case in school. With my curves being as severe as 69 and 54 degrees, an operation was the only option for me. Now, the normal waiting time for an operation was around a month, two months, but in my case, I was waiting for about a year because of complications found in my tests. Now, as a 15 year old living with the psychological effects of the constant fear of going for an operation, the unknown, I completely lost myself. Needless to say, the pain that I was experiencing, my lungs were getting crushed by my ribs, my shoulders were uneven and I had a big bit of my spine sticking out of my back which was excruciating when sitting down and leaning against the chair. My boobs were growing uneven which came with a whole load of insecurities alone and especially at that age. Now I've always been a bit of an introvert but dealing with this condition, especially in a height of high school, with my body changing in more ways than just puberty, it was really tough. So I found myself quite isolated going through school and so I spent my lunch times in my art class. Looking back, art was definitely my coping mechanism. It was a lifeline, it was an escape. 
a joy. I lost all my aspirations. Scoliosis very much defined me. It ate me up. However, on the 24th of June 2014, I eventually got my operation. I had two titanium rods and 16 screws installed in my spine to correct it. And honestly, it was like a reset button had been pressed. All of a sudden, my whole future opened up possibilities and the want to do things again. I think going through something like that really puts things into perspective. It makes you look at life in a different way and it makes you appreciate the little things. And for me, it definitely gave me a huge drive to succeed, which I didn't have before, and to really just make something of myself. Which brings us to finding my niche. Growing up, I really enjoyed doing my nails, although I never really gave it too much thought because I wanted to be everything. A teacher, a shop owner, work in a supermarket, I wanted to be a seamstress, a jewellery maker, a sculptor, a nail technician. I could go on and on. I was definitely an overly imaginative child. I spent a lot of time playing, often by myself. Here's an example. I would go out and I would collect some rocks, bring them in the house, wash them obviously, and I would place them all on the floor. And then I would go back and I would pick them all up pretending I was a farmer picking up potatoes. Weird. I also had a bike, which wasn't my bike, it was my car. I had little mirrors put on the sides and a basket on the front, a basket on the back. Whenever I would take a turn, I would make the sound of the indicator out loud. Tick, 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 tick. That's the scale of imaginative we are talking here. At one point, I took over my mum's utility room, bless her, and transformed it into a nail salon. I used an A4 sheet of printer paper to display all the different colours, probably five, different colours of nail varnishes that I had, including nail designs that you could get for the price ranging between five pence to 50 pence. And at some point, I also did this A3 size poster of Agnes's nail studio which I can't even remember ever having done. It came out in lockdown times. Forgetting about all these little memories and putting my childhood in the past, in my later years when I went to get my nails done for the first time, which was for prom, I can just remember being so mesmerised by all the little pots and the jars and the glitters and everything that the nail technician had, including the way the sparkle on her nails caught the light when she was doing mines. Needless to say, the discovery that you can combine art with nails was mind-blowing. Now this nail technician worked from home and she also did makeup and I can just remember thinking, wow, you are living the dream and I wanna be like you. So I went on to study beauty therapy for a year, which covered nails, and then I went on to do makeup for two years. So as my studies were coming to an end, Around January time, I had been working in a salon for about a month and I found myself in a situation where I actually had to walk out of there after having a absolute nightmare of an experience working in a salon. I'm not going to touch on that in this video, but let me know down in the comments below if you'd like me to talk about it. At this point, my mum encouraged me to open up my own business and start my own salon. So because I was working part-time in Next and I was earning an income, I hadn't taken out my student loan. However, after deciding that I did want to start off my own salon, I took out the loan, which got backdated to the beginning of the college year. So all of a sudden, I had funding to start a business. So I went and checked out a room that was up for rent in my town. The ideal location with parking, perfect size, and the rent was really reasonable. So I went along and here I am in this room with the landlord. I'm thinking, yeah, this could be it. I asked him, you know, how long do I get to think about this and get back to you with my decision? To which he replied that the next person to view it is outside. And I could see the lady. I signed the lease. So here I am, no plan, no clients, no proper salon experience. I had nothing but my drive to succeed and I suppose I also had my loan which was helpful. So in 2018, Blush Boudoir opened. A quaint little boutique style room with fancy clothing around the ceiling. I had these French style armchairs which really looked perfect in the space. I found the word boudoir which I thought was really fitting. It's a French word for a woman's getting ready room or to pout. 
and blush resonated with makeup and the BB rolled off the tongue really nicely. And I am terrible with coming up with names. In fact, I'm wanting to rebrand and come up with a new name. It's proving difficult. Anyway, so there I was, 19 years of age, setting up my salon while juggling my part-time job in Next and doing my graded unit in college. So because I had no clients, I knew that I was going to have to share content like hell to get butts on my chair. And that's what I did. And very quickly, I built up a client base of around 80 clients. And I think it was about a year in when I had to close my books to new clients. And so I fell into a sort of a comfort zone, if you like, working long hours, nine to five, every day, doing nails all day, every day. And... I loved it. I really, really loved it. However, something was missing. It just wasn't enough. I just felt like I was destined for so much more than that. And so I tried to start up YouTube again, but with how busy I was, I managed to post one video and that was the end of that. I also got quite into doing reels for Instagram, but it just wasn't it. Bearing in mind, I also ended up moving around in that building from room to room twice, but that's a story for another day. We also had COVID and I did actually make an attempt to get back on YouTube on that same channel from way back when. I posted about four or five videos, but it just wasn't the right time. Eventually, after lockdown, my path crossed with my lovely partner, Reese and we have been together ever since. Summer of last year, we actually bought our own home and it has the perfect setup for a home salon. And so I made the risky decision of closing down my salon on the high street where at one point four of us nail technicians worked at and I moved home to my home salon where it's just myself now. And so we did up the home salon and honestly, I think it's the most amazing thing ever. And I just kept thinking it's far too good not to share it with the world. Now, while me and Reese were on such a high about having our own place, our very own place that we can call our home, it was quickly brought down by my scoliosis when it was discovered that one out of the 16 screws had broken and I was going to be needing another operation. Now, of course, this meant a lot of time out of work and going forward, as suggested by my surgeon, I was going to need to cut down my client base of around 75 clients to something more manageable with my condition. I can no longer manage the nine to five sitting down all day behind a desk with my crippling scoliosis. Being older and stronger and having a fantastic support group around me, I knew that this time round the operation and the whole process was going to be so much easier and it was. But I was done giving scoliosis the time of the day. And so I thought it's time for YouTube. It's now or never. Not only did I miss doing YouTube videos, but I also see it as a bit of a lifeline now as I can no longer do nails as much as I did before. So if YouTube could one day start to make me an income, it would be the absolute dream come true. So I filmed some videos in the little time that I had before my operation with the plan of editing them whilst I was recovering. And that's what I did. So I had my operation on the 15th of January this year and I managed to post my first video at the end of that month with just 18 subscribers at the time. So I promised myself I was going to give this YouTube thing a damn good go. I was committed. And so I've been posting one video every single week since the end of January apart from one week. But with each upload, my analytics just keep going up and up and up. And I'm mesmerized at the rate of my subscriber count going up. We are currently at 639 subscribers. And that's been two and a half months, almost three months. Mesmerized. Thank you each and every single one of you. 639 subscribers. I often envision that amount of people in a room. Might need a football pitch actually. So I'm really enjoying being back on YouTube and creating videos. I felt very much held down in my environment, working all day, every day, doing the nails, which I love, but I just want to do so much more than that. I got comfortable and nothing ever grows in your comfort zone. So if you're thinking about starting YouTube, just do it. Get over the cringe of the sound of your own voice because soon enough, you are going to be listening to yourself talk in an empty room by yourself for hours upon hours 
and it's gonna feel quite normal. You've just got to put yourself out there and YouTube opens up so many other opportunities. Speaking of opportunities, in my previous video I spoke about my frustration with a nail brand that I have been using for years upon years and spent thousands upon thousands of pounds in and recently having heard lots of fantastic things about a brand called Hona, home of nail art, I wondered if they would like to collaborate with me. Having swayed for weeks whether or not to get in contact with them because my YouTube channel was still fairly new, but eventually I thought to hell with it. If I don't ask, you don't get. At least this way I'm giving myself a chance. So I sent them an email and to my surprise, they were delighted to work with me, which let me just say, it was a massive, humongous confidence boost. So I tried the products which are fabulous and I did a video on it. If you want to go check it out, hit the link just up here. And I'm just so glad that I got a chance to try the products and work with such an incredible company in the industry so early on in my journey here on YouTube. Now they seemed really impressed with the video that I had produced and to my surprise and let me just say thank god I was sitting down when I opened this email because they have actually invited me to an event in Wales next month. I'm just blown away. I am invited. Me! Bearing in mind I have only been on YouTube for two and a half, almost three months, had I not started YouTube, I would have completely missed this opportunity. I think we get instincts ideas or gut feelings or whatever you want to call it, I always think there must be some reasoning behind why we get these feelings and we should always see them through because you just never know what opportunity lies around the corner. I've recently shared a post on a Facebook group for nails with a link to my YouTube channel and a bit of a backstory to myself such as the one that I've told here on this video, slightly more brief. But I shared a picture of me in my old salon and I have received so many comments asking me where I got the 2.4 meter nail sticker that's on the wall there. I made it myself. I have a Cricut which is a cutting machine which cuts out vinyl which is what that essentially is it's a sticker. Now that post has led me to completing my first ever order of one of those shape charts which I actually went and posted out today which is super exciting and this has made me want to pursue opening up an Etsy shop. Again another path I would never have ended up on if it wasn't for YouTube. It's pushed me to pursue my crafting which I have missed doing so very much. On that note you can find a link to my Etsy shop down in the description box below where you can purchase one of these for yourself. I have them in a standard size and if you need a custom one you can message me through my Etsy shop and I will be adding other things on there as well. I have so much planned. So I guess the message I'm trying to convey in this video is life is too short, don't ignore your instincts and just go for it. There's something about YouTube that you cannot get from any other platform. Instagram reels or TikToks, the instant gratification that you get from producing those short form content for those platforms is nowhere near as rewarding as producing long form content for YouTube. I feel TikTok is a toxic, endless, dark void that you fall into scrolling and scrolling, seconds turn into minutes, minutes turn into hours, it's really unhealthy. And on the creator side, if you genuinely enjoy the process of video creating and producing in-depth, authentic videos, you can never get that from producing short form content for the pages such as Instagram and TikTok. That's just how I feel. YouTube is like a digital diary where you can unleash your creativity and showcase your skills, grow a community and connect with like-minded people, grow your confidence and pick up endless amount of skills whilst doing that. It's extremely rewarding. From seeing the new subscriber notification pop up on your phone to someone taking the time out of their day to say a few positive words about your video in the comment section and of course needless to say the fantastic YouTube monetization program once you're lucky enough to reach it. Luck probably isn't the right word to use though because when there's a will there's a way. And on that note I want to say a huge massive thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to my story and to watch my video. If you enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for my future videos. Until next time, bye! Mm.
I wish I could like put that up here. That would be so good. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm so sorry. I know you're editing this. I love you. Hmm. I also had a bike, which wasn't my car. It was a bike. What? Doing nails all day, and here's Freya interrupting. Nine to five. We bought our home summer of last summer. Summer of last summer. Click the link. Clunk. Oh my god. Where I would be with that. 